And as a young teenager, I went ahead and made the uh, foolish mistake of of joining a gang. And so I, I got linked up with the Latin Kings, uh, rolled with them for a while, uh, saw a lot of things, got into a lot of issues. Hi, my name is uh, Hernan Peña, also known as Ernie Peña. And uh, I'd like to share a little bit about my story, my life with you. Um, I was raised in Queens, New York, originally from Queens, raised by a single mother and uh, raised in the projects there in Queens, New York. And um, at a very young age, I wasn't raised in church. I was raised in, in the streets, essentially, you know, and my mother did the best that she could. God bless her heart, you know, but uh, the uh, streets kept, um, kept drawing me. And as a young teenager, I went ahead and made the uh, foolish mistake of of joining a gang and so I, I got linked up with the Latin Kings, uh, rolled with them for a while, uh, saw a lot of things, got into a lot of issues, got into a lot of things and got to a point where the reason why I joined was because I was looking for something to fill my heart, to fill my life, you know, a brotherhood as you could say, maybe even look for a role model. And so although my older brother was in the picture, he wasn't living there because he had joined the, the military. It had taken him away, you know. And so I kind of gave myself to these men, to these streets, to these young, young teenagers, you know, that I'd look up to, you know, what the gang life would, would offer. And, and I wanted that, you know, and, and I wanted to fill my life with that. And so fast forward, I had to, I was at a place where I had to leave and I was given the option to move and relocate. I had to. And so I, I, I took the opportunity and moved over to San Diego, California uh, to live with my older brother, kind of start brand new, start fresh. And uh, that's where I met my wife. And e even through that relationship, you know, I had a lot of rejection that I was dealing with, a lot of things that we were working out. And uh, as young teenagers, uh, got married at a very young age, um, had my, my, my daughter at a very young age. And so I found myself still not feeling, although I was married, I had the relationship. I had the, the brand new family that I was, I was still giving myself to different vices, to different things to try to fill something in my life. And uh, so then I looked for a higher cause. Calling. And I joined the uh, United States Navy, you know, to serve my country proudly, especially after 9-11 that struck a chord with me. My older brother was in the Marine Corps. And so I joined the Navy and I tried to do what I could there. And I quickly found out that that was another thing that I just tried to fill my life with. And it just left me ultimately empty, not only empty, but now I had the money to kind of support these different vices to uh, fall into a deeper hole of depression, of, of, of anger, of rage. And uh, unfortunately, my family, my young family, was the recipient of that. And it wasn't up until 2006 that a, a man who, um, who was my barber, and uh, I went to him because I was looking for, you know, the New York cut. And so he was well known, and, but he was a Christian man. And every single time that I sat in his chair, he would try to tell me about Jesus. And I'd block him off because I wasn't raised. I didn't see Jesus in the streets. I didn't see Jesus in the things that I was doing because everything was, was, was blocked by what I wanted, my desire, the flesh, just things that I wanted to enjoy about the world. And so I clearly, uh, I couldn't see Jesus. And it was one night that me and my wife had a really, really bad fight. And that took me to, I had an inspection the next day, so I went to go get my haircut, like I usually do from uh, this brother. And as I'm sitting in this chair, here he goes again, tries to tell me about Jesus. But tonight, that night, I wasn't having it. I said, hey, listen, no disrespect. I don't, I don't want to hear anything about Jesus right now, bro, okay? And he just kind of paused for a minute, and he said, man, I just felt God wanted me to tell you that he can heal your marriage. But okay. And he continued to cut my hair, and I just, it stopped me dead in my tracks because here I was, a young, bitter man who gave himself to a lot of different things, try to fill his heart, my void, with a lot of different things and I always ended up empty. And here was this man speaking something, he, he doesn't know what I have going on. But then God was able to use him to speak directly to me and it was that day that he introduced me into a, uh, a uh, loving church. And he, he, he connected me with an individual that reached out to me and uh, reached out to me and my family. And so they invited us to church. And it was January of 2006 in a Wednesday night midweek service that me and my wife stepped into the church, heard the gospel of Jesus Christ, 
heard something. It was like a reflection of a mirror of who I was. And I bowed my head and I raised my hand and I said, I, I get it. The things that I've been doing have, haven't been working. I need to try Jesus. And I gave Jesus a chance. And that was the, the turning point in my life where everything changed. And from then on, it wasn't like from one day to the next, like a fairy tale, everything magically worked out. No, no, no. But from that day, I walked away from that altar, stood up, and I felt this, this heaviness off my shoulders. And, and a new relationship happened. Something new happened in my life. And that was a long time ago. And I never knew that I could experience that. And so here I am today. Uh, I've been called, I've felt the call to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. Served my time in the Navy, got out, stepped out in faith. And with my wife and my four children, we uh, decided to answer the call to preach the gospel. And here we are. And, and all I'm looking for is for God to do that same transformation that he did in my life in other people's lives. And so I invite you. I don't know where you are and I don't know what you've got going on. But I do know this. If God could take this kid from Queens, change his heart and completely transform it. If you would have told me 18 years ago, Ernie, one day you're going to be preaching the gospel. I say, get out of here. But here we are. And that's the power of Jesus Christ. You can tap into that. Come join us, experience that power, and see what God will do for your life. Thank you.